I'm going to cover essentially what's called instant content. That is something they kind of push out quickly on the internet. It's a relatively new thing. You know, I haven't heard of it, so I'll stop filling you all in. My name is Katie. People know me as Dutters. I'm the director of sales and marketing at the Scarehouse. I also am the director of social media marketing at Psychic Media, and also a sporadic podcaster. I show up on a lot of random podcasts and do uh, one for the Scarehouse. So I'm interested in checking out all those sessions later. <laughs> And then this is what I actually do. <laughs> Content creation, graphic design, digital marketing, podcasting, talent. Let's call myself a social butterfly. You have to interact. <laughs> and then uh, it's all me right with my care house job. Also customer service, social media analysis, Goofball. Uh, go to lots of meetings in Google and, and website analysis. So it's a little bit of everything, even though you're like, these are your titles. This is what you actually do. It reminds me of this app, this, car, this thing with memes I used to have, like what my family thinks I do. Oh, I right. <laughs> And then my ultimate goal is making my company and clients and resources go further using digital tools. <laughs> That's what my boyfriend thinks I do. <laughs> what is instant content? It's essentially any sort of media that's distributed in an instant to your audience, followers, or the world. A few examples of social media platforms that currently distribute instant content. Uh, Meerkat was one of the original ones. Uh, Periscope kind of followed up quickly and they recently gotten together with Twitter. Uh, Snapchat has also been around for quite a while now. Uh, Facebook is now in the game, and so is Instagram. They're the newest one, as far as the major platforms go. What you want to do is you want to go to your audience. This is like a, a, not a complete list. There are things out there that pop up every day that you might not even realize are a thing. You might even have audiences, like a place like Reddit and things like that, you just don't even think about. So you kind of have to look and see where your audience is. Um, focus on the big three, especially if you're starting out. Like these are the major players right now: Snapchat, Instagram Story, and Facebook Live. Uh, traditionally, you've heard of Snapchat as being kind of geared toward millennials or the younger audience. Instagram Story that also kind of skews a little younger, but it also is. is Instagram is a huge platform right now, and then uh, Facebook Live is something they've integrated in now, where you can go live. And most important thing is go where your audience is. Don't make them find you. It's key. Because some people will go, oh, I just want to be on these because they're important, but my audience could not be on any of them, and you're just wasting your time. <laughs> what should you show on Insta content? I like to show behind the scenes things, things that you can't, you might not see, just might not think are just quite right on your Facebook business page or your brand page, or might not seem right on Twitter as part of a conversation. Also, major events we do, especially at Scarehouse, we like to do things where we're down in a parade. I like to do it from a parade, I'm like, look, this is what it's like to walk down the street when you're part of our group. One on one, so that way it kind of gives you a chance to, especially Facebook Live, gives you a chance to interact one on one with your audience. And that one missing component for the rest of your social media strategy. So that might be just something that you're just like one other piece that you want to bring your audience in. They might even be asking for it. They might say, hey, um, for example, we saw that when we're at Scarehouse, we saw a scene that we just thought was so cool. How did it, what go, goes into like shooting something like this or creating a scene like that? And the most important thing, what your audience wants to see. What do, what do most audiences want to see? Do they want to actually see it live and interact, or is there just as much interest with the historical comments? It kind of goes both. Like it's, as far as like what I've been seeing, uh, the live is great for just kind of tuning in. And like it, what's great about a lot of these things, like uh, Snapchat and Instagram, is there's ways that you can save it and repurpose it later. Right. Which is nice, and then it kind of becomes a historic thing. Right. But um, it, the historic thing is nice because it's a long term thing. Like you come back to it later and rediscover the content again later, and back and forth. But uh, live is just kind of an interesting component. I guess a lot, it's really good for a lot of um, Q and A. Yeah. Like, do. Remember the word repurpose! <laughs> this is great because a lot of um, what you want to do with your content, no matter what the content is, is find another use for it. You've already created it, why not find use for it? Move it from, if you have a photo, add it to a blog, add a post, add to a video, transcribe the post, add it to somewhere else. So it's all about repurposing content. Okay, Snapchat. This is the OG, in my mind, of the real live putting things out there. Or the instant content putting out there quickly. Um, the audience does skew younger, it's the regular sharing. You can, with Snapchat, I'll go through it and show you how. Uh, but you can either kind of share it to one or more, pe more people, or what they call a story, which is something that kind of stays up for 24 hours, okay. and goes to either your audience, like any of your followers, or you can send it out to anyone. 
like anyone who was searching online for it can find it, depending on your preferences. This is a Snapchat. <laughs> when you're looking at this, and this is why that a lot of people say Snapchat uh, skews younger, is this is what you get when you open the app. What is this? <laughs> a lot of this is like, what in the world is this? So I use this as my pushing calendar. And so when you're looking at different things on here, going across the board, is this is just whether or not the flash is on. This flips the camera, so if you're front the court. Uh, this connects to, gets you to your Snapchat story, or your Snapchat friends, over here in their story they post. This actually takes the photo, and that goes to the stories. So I'm going to say, let's take a Snapchat photo. So I'm going to take it, hit the button, oh. and then you're like, this is so my cat. And these are text, and this is essentially the writing tool. The text tool is usually a T at the top, and then you can type in whatever you want to say there. What's nice is if you tap the text, you can change the color of the text. Yeah. So it's nice. kind of neat. So it's like, so my cat. Because especially if you're having, like, well, it's usually a white text. So if you have a light background, you're like, how can I even see this? And then you can take the little pen tool and just break it. It's like, ha oh. When you're looking at this at the bottom, this here is a timer. This is very important, and I'll show you why this is really important. Because you have no idea how long a few seconds can be <laughs> in your life until you're staring at an image for way too long. And then this is so like, oh, I really think this is a cute picture. I'm going to say this later. You can download it for use later. And then this one adds it to your story, directly to your Snapchat story, which I'll show you in a sec. And then this one allows you to send it to individual audience, like a per just maybe a specific a couple people that maybe find it interesting as opposed to everybody. So if I just click like, I just want to send it to a certain few people. These are all my friends. There's a whole big long list here. And then there's this thing called My Story. With My Story, that's the one that you can either have for anyone who can find you to view, or you maybe you just want to throw out something that you just find interesting and not, you know, oh, you know what, the, my friend Lindsay would not find this very interesting. You know, just, you know, a couple people on your list would find it interesting. You don't feel the need to, like, just single them out. Like, there's not a bunch of people I think will like this. I'll just throw it up with the story. So it's almost like a Twitter. It's the concept kind of my story. The thing with Twitter is it's a conversation. Okay. And that's, um, I'll kind of explain that Twitter has fallen out of favor because it, it's almost like you have to constantly monitor it. Yeah. If you really want to be good at Twitter and you really want to put the effort in it, you have to constantly monitor it. Yeah. Where this is just kind of like throwing things out there. And then if your friends respond, that's cool. If someone who's not a friend and they can, when you're doing business, and says, oh, that was really cool. That's nice. But you're not, you don't have to necessarily go back and go, hey, thanks for saying that. Yeah. We're actually, I mean, if it's a customer service issue or a direct question, then you wouldn't want to go back and answer yeah. it. But you don't have to, as opposed to like Twitter, where it's like, oh, if I don't respond, people are not going to see me. And right. okay. there's a whole bunch more to it. All right, this is the stories page here. This is my personal story here. And then they have this thing where you can actually look at different, like, 17 magazines. There are some videos from Rio, like short snippets snaps on Rio. Um, this is an Aries, a twice. And then these are my friend's stories, right? They're here. And so I could watch, if I click on Abby's video, it essentially be like a slideshow of all the pictures she posted in her story. And then she has videos on there too. And if I want to, I can also download my story from here, repurposing my content. So, for example, I downloaded, I clicked the download of everything I did yesterday. And I'm like, oh, I could have had a neat day. I want to tell everybody, kind of show other people who aren't necessarily on Snapchat, maybe somebody on Facebook or Instagram wants to see it. So, you have to think about where you want to post your Snapchat story. And then, do you need to edit it? So, this is where you can kind of put things where um, it, it's a, the portrait mode, which doesn't look as good on Facebook because they kind of like the landscape mode, the widescreen. So, this app here, this, um, this is one of my favorites. I kind of the name. I did a good job. <laughs> but um, essentially, what in, it's in shot, Insta shot. There it is. I was like, I gotta put it on there. Insta shot. Insta shot. I can definitely. I'll, I'll send you my PowerPoint at the end if you okay, like. Great. Yeah, you know it's on here. It's the Insta shot, and that enables you to give you kind of these sidebars. If you ever watch the news and they kind of have that video, the like, on the scene video, and it doesn't fill our screen, so a lot of times they use this thing, like for example, Insta shot. Where it gives us bars on the side, they kind of just they lay like the photo, the uh, video larger and then the clearer version. But you also add text and emojis. 
uh, put music on it, put it on Facebook or Instagram. So it's nice. This is a free app. The only thing that pops up on it is there is a, a thing in the corner that says in shot. It's the shot, but it's really cool. And we're finding a lot more in the social media marketing that the text is huge. Because people don't want to have this down on their phones. Right. They want to watch things. Yeah. They're like, so what's going on in here? Like my friends and I at the beach. Oh, that's cool. That sounds interesting. Because yeah. maybe in the first scene, it doesn't really tell them what's going on. Right. So this way, they're like, oh, it kind of catches their attention that way. Smart. Okay, so this is my video. So I repurposed it, made with a shot, and I downloaded it. Okay, so this is my Snapchat story that I repurposed. See how it kind of clicks through? Four seconds. Okay, I can see what's going on. Now I have this image up. This is 10 seconds. It's an eternity yeah. <laughs> when you're watching something. Especially for me, I'm like, oh, what's next? So it's like, it's weird how those 10 seconds can feel like such a long time, especially when you're watching. I usually stick around four seconds. If there's something I want them to read, I leave it up just a smidge bit longer. Yeah. But if it's just something that they should be able to get right away, they've got it. Yeah. Especially if you want to repurpose it on places like Instagram, because they have a 60 second time limit on videos. Okay. So if you're like, you have everything 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, you can only put six right. images. Instagram. Instagram recently dethroned Twitter in like the big three social media platforms. One of the things is the constant need to babysit Twitter and interact on Twitter. Instagram is, is great because it's just visual. People love visuals at this point. Anything catches their eye, gets their attention, they absolutely love it. So they released um, their own, it's called Instagram Story, which is very similar to Snapchat Stories. <laughs> Interesting how that works. Uh, but Instagram's great if you're a visual brand. Instagram story, their Insta content extension literally just rolled out, I think, a week or two ago. It's been very, very new. One problem with Instagram, it's a lot harder to repurpose it than Snapchat. I think it's something they're going to improve on later, but as for right now, it's just, it's kind of a pain to do. So, for example, um, what I started out with yesterday, we had our big promo shoot at Scarehouse yesterday. Um, I said, we're posting behind the scenes videos in our Instagram story throughout the day. So this is my Instagram post, letting people know that we're posting things in our Instagram story. Okay, which is in the map. And when I'm looking at my Instagram, these are the stories across the top. So if you're wondering what they you on there, there's like, what are these little circles? Those are the stories. If they're blank, I've already looked at it. If there's colors, it means there's stories for me to check out. So what you do is you hit that little plus button, and you can add to your own story. This was one of the first images I took of the day. <laughs> All the donuts. <laughs> yes. We eat a lot of donuts and have a lot of coffee, especially in our promo shoot days. So from this image, when I go after I posted this up, and it's a very similar to Snapchat where you can put words on it, you can actually draw on it too, just like Snapchat. I can see at the bottom 142 people looked at it at this point, how long ago I posted it. Same thing with Snapchat, the Instagram store is 24 hours. Okay. So it goes away, but technically I guess it's showing that it doesn't technically go away, it just disappears from your audience's view. <laughs> so there are hacks, of course, already. Of course. So if I put this little dot 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 button at the bottom, it allows me to either delete this photo from my story, this is the second photo of my story, delete it, or I can save this photo, I'm like, oh, you know what, I really like this, I'm going to use this later. I can share it as a post, so instead of just being here, it'll actually push it to my regular Instagram feed, okay. to be part of that. And then my story settings, which sound like there should be more than like two options, but they're not. It's essentially saying that um, with your story settings, I can either have everybody who follows me on Instagram see my story, or I can select certain people. So maybe, uh, for example, I have a niece. If I, I have a, I posted a video of my niece that I only want to show them, like my mom and my sister-in-law, then that way I can select certain people. Or if I have some sort of hater who really dislikes me, <laughs> I can block them from seeing my story, okay. which is nice. Yes. But this same photo is very important because in order to create a story from Instagram, you will have to save the photos from every photo in your story, <laughs> which is a pain in the butt right now. Like I said, I think Instagram will probably figure that out and get it together, but... So this is where your video web editor, another, this is another one that I like, it's called Splice by GoPro. And this enables you to essentially 
take whatever photos or videos and splice it into the video. Also allows you to add sound that they have. You can add your own iTunes music, which is fun, and add the words. So when you select it, you just pick the book. So I downloaded every one of these from my story. Select, 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 select. And then I created a story. And when I did that, um, one of the nice things is, um, so I repurposed my story. I saved it as, I think it was a promo shoot or something. And now, today, I posted, in case you missed it, here's our behind-the-scenes story over our promo shoot. Because at this point, I've lost a couple of the beginning images mm -hmm. because it's been 24 hours. Uh, yeah. So you just want to make sure that if you want to need those images, you have to download them for 24 hours. So here you go, I'm using it again. <laughs> Facebook Live. Um, this is newer to Facebook, too. This is where you kind of interact on one-on-one -on -one basis or if you want to share an event. Uh, for example, if you're going to be doing something live, I always suggest to tell your audience you're going to be live. Okay, um, maybe on Instagram, if I have certain following, if I know my audience is watching Instagram and Twitter more often than looking at Facebook, yeah. then I'll be like, hey, by the way, on Facebook Live, we're going to be at, um, for example, the, the one example I'll show uh, is we had some zombies to Kennywood for the grand, pretty grand opening of Noah's Ark. And I was like, hey, we're going to be live here. So that way your friends and your viewers can watch for it. And then a uh, huge, I discovered this right away, was check your Wi-Fi or cellular connection. If you have a poor yeah. connection, your audience will let you know. Yeah. And they will not, depending on who's watching, they may or may not be nice about it. <laughs> and so it was, uh, that was our first foray into it. It was a lot of fun. Um, also, write an inter interesting description. That's key. Like, if you just say, hey, this is me and my friends hanging out. Why do I watch this? Or, look at this, this guy hanging out. Not interested. Hey guys, we are taking our zombies to Noah's Ark to be part of this event, blah, 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 blah. That's going to get people's attention. Also, make sure you're interacting with your audience. When you do a Facebook Live video, you will see comments pop up as you go, which is really neat. Because that way you can, I, I've done videos where I've been at a place and they're like, hey, can you tell me something about this? And I said, oh yeah, hey Rachel, thanks for watching. We are here because it's the regret opening of Noah's Ark. This is the and you can kind of get, explain more yeah. of the things. Uh, I'll even get people who are like, are you hiring? Sure, yeah. So there's an opportunity there to interact with your audience and kind of just thank them for being there. Right. So you're not just kind of alone. And it's like great for Q&A with that too. It's like, oh, hey, do you guys, um, do you all like hire people with a certain background? No, we have X, Y, and Z. We have a lot of people who don't even have an acting background that we'd like to come in. Tell your audience to follow a tap button. At the bottom of the screen when you're live, and the button that says follow. If you click on that, your audience will be alerted the next time you're live, which is really cool. So then you don't have to tell them as often, hey, by the way, we're going to be live, because they're going to know. Um, for example, some of the places we use it for Scare House is the middle of a pride parade, which was fun, and then Taco Tuesday with the build crew. We brought tacos in one day <laughs> for the build crew, and a taco party was called. It was a little bit of Q&A with uh, some of our fans. When you do a Facebook Live video, at the end, just like a regular video, it gets stats. I love stats. So this uh, was a few things. is peak live viewers at this point for this video. This was at the Bicentennial Parade that we had our zombie crew in. Uh, we had 16 people watch. This is uh, minutes viewed is the number of people watching times the minutes they were watching. So it looks pretty crazy. Um, people reached 7,863. Um, the video was viewed 3,434 times. Wow. And uh, 10 second views was 1,584. Unique viewers, 3,434, which is cool. So we had people kind of going and finding it and watching at least a little bit of it. And then the reaction, 101. Average completion, 23%, which is pretty good. It sounds low, but to watch it. No, it sounds pretty high, I would think. <laughs> but then it tells you where you, this video was used in one post. You can actually repurpose a live video and you'll post later on because it's your video. So this was really cool, and, and then you can also download it, which, um, for example, with our Pennywood video, uh, we made a longer, more intensive video on YouTube, or we used bits and pieces of our Facebook Live. So doesn't it automatically become a post on Facebook? Yes. It's just part of okay. Mm-hmm. But then you can incorporate it into other posts. Like, for example, if I was like, hey, did you see us at the parade? And then we're using okay. it again, it would pop down there. It's nice that it tells you everything down here again. Almost the same exact information is there. But it's, it's a great way to see video. And it tells you when you were live and how long it was. 
which is nice because sometimes you're like, oh, when did I do that? <laughs> or how did that look? This is my Facebook Live tips. Learning Facebook Live. Start on something interesting. When you are recording, you want your audience right there to go, oh, wow, that's really cool. I want to watch the rest of this video. Be aware of which direction your camera is facing. My issue is I have not paid attention to the fact that um, my camera was front facing. Here is a good example. So, oh, here, it's our, we've arrived at Kennywood, through Noah's Ark. This is my face oh, for the beginning of this video. Facebook, we are at Kennywood. I have this many people, you know, watching this, and then this is my face, and then this is the ground. So make sure you're always keeping yourself on something interesting. Thankfully, I don't mind the fact that I just, I've gotten over, I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's, you know, because I, you really could get wrapped up in, like, that's the angle I picked from here, not here. <laughs> Could you pick a worse angle? Right. And actually, the video before this, I started out on my forehead. It's <laughs> visual so, interest. I was like, like that's my forehead. Because I didn't realize that it was front facing as opposed to. I was like, oh my gosh. And then this stuff over here is actually the comments. And when they came in, like, how many in the video? Like, uh, I was answering these um, either by over when I was talking or messaging later. Okay. They went back through. So, um, one of my friends was like, Zonkeys are recorded, Noah's Ark 2x2. Of course. So something went back later and answered, I can't remember what that was. <laughs> you occasionally get the, hey, shout me out. <laughs> sure, why not? How are you doing this? So, yes, so always be paying attention to what you are. Something very important with Facebook Facebook Live or Instagram or anything that pushes out instant content is make sure sometimes before you post it, just take a breath. Think about what you're posting. Maybe, um, how does this impact my company? There are times um, that you don't want to put things out there. Maybe you have some paperwork, if, you, you know, if you're in some sort of medical field, some type of paperwork that you just don't want to put out there. You might have a, a new scene or we sometimes have maps and photos up at ScareHouse that aren't ready for public consumption yet that we have to kind of like, oh, wait a minute, I can't make sure that this is in. you got to frame your scene and figure out how it's going to impact your company. You also know a little bit, this is a really cool thing. Look at this bug here or something that's just like, <laughs> this is not, you know, it will not have a positive impact on your audience. Or maybe something that you don't, you find interesting, but your audience won't. So you kind of have to think things through like that. Um, how will it impact my audience? You don't want to essentially post something to upset your audience because you love them. When, uh, one example of this was um, for our, the Pride Parade, Pittsburgh Pride Parade. The Scarehouse regularly really participates in it, and the morning of the parade is when we found out about the shooting in Orlando at Pulse. And we literally were getting ready, and we're making these neon colored characters, and we're like, how are we going to do this? Like, we were, we were heartbroken, and it was like, how are you going to do this? And a lot of people, you think of social media, it's like, oh, this is fun, I'm putting all this great content, this is great, and then, and then real life hits you, and you're like, how do, we, what do we, how do we deal with this? Yeah. And it was like, do we post Do we post that we're getting ready for it? Do we post that we're in it? Do we post this? And, and pride is something very important to our organization. So we were like, we have, we have to do this. This is very important to them and to our audience. So we did. We posted it. And we even posted something afterwards on Facebook and said that we questioned about posting it, like whether it was the proper attitude to have at the time. Because you don't, you don't want to ever appear, appear insensitive, obviously. And the outreach was amazing. Like how many people were like, no, we, we need you to post about these things because this is how we heal. And it was great. It was just, it's just interesting when you don't, when you think about Facebook or Instagram and any of these platforms and social media about how, how does this really impact the real world? Because sometimes you get lost in your own little bubble. You're like, here's my audience, here's this, and the real world happens, and how do you handle that? These are my general social media tips because I always think they're important to put on there. You can't be everywhere. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many social media platforms out there, you can't be everywhere. And also, this is huge too. You can't consume, share, learn, follow everything. You try, you lose your mind. <laughs> this is why it's important to make friends with people who have similar jobs. I have a lot of friends who are involved in social media for different companies too. This is a great way for us to exchange ideas because maybe something that works for a corporate company might also work for Scarabs or vice versa. Like, hey, we want to try this. 
They also are following maybe different blogs than you're following, or following different accounts and seeing things that you're not seeing. Because if you think you have to be on social media 24 hours a day, you'll lose your mind. <laughs> Which a lot of people, when they first get into it, think they have to. It's like, you know, you can actually be a normal human <laughs> and do this. Also, let your friends help you. Because a lot of times people are like, well, if I ask so and so how you know how they're doing this or why they're doing this, they're going to think I don't know what to do. And, and a lot of times with social media, people think that you have to be an expert, you have to be a social media expert. And I hate that phrase because we're always learning, and with technology changing so often, you always have to keep you know, learning, relearning things. And I, I can't tell you how many times I yell at Facebook when I'm like, I finally figured you out, and then it changed something. And I'm like, oh. like I, it's so funny because I was just having a conversation with a colleague, and I'm like. Remember how we, it was right here, it was a tab right here, and I added a podcast tab, and then it was on my page, it was like, where is this at now? And then it's like, no, you have to do X, Y, and Z, you know, it's just, so it's, it's okay to ask questions and have your friends fall back on your colleagues. And don't be so hard on yourself. That's huge, too, because it's, I, I have had moments where I was like, oh, man, I should have posted that picture, or I should have taken a poster picture of that, and I could have used it for this and done this with this, and, and, and just drove myself bonkers, because you, you can't think like that, because it's just... You might think, oh man, for next time, I'll remember that we should definitely take a photo of this. That would be great for the Facebook page. But you can't do that to yourself constantly. So just beat yourself up and kind of lose your mind. <laughs> but like I said, there's a lot of schools of thought where it's like they think you should be constantly doing things. And that's, I, I, I can't do it. I can't physically and mentally handle constantly being. This is my gift. Ah! So I can ask any questions you have. <laughs> So I'll let hear some of it up for you. Oh, a lot. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I had I wasn't even familiar with the, the term instant mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. so I, I knew what it was once you started describing. Yeah, it, I didn't know the term. So there, it's weird because there isn't quite a term yet. Yeah. So we kind of have to create like, right. this is what we're doing. Right. See what this is. And but there's a lot more going on in Snapchat than I realized. <sighs> it's changed a lot over the last few years. So oh my gosh, yeah, and it's have to catch up. It, it's funny because I do have a group of friends who are younger than me that have taught me a lot because I, I didn't see the value in it and once they started showing me certain things and even if you start following certain brands on Snapchat like how are they doing this like how, how are they making this into a thing where they're actually reaching customers it's, it's great it's, it's like oh yeah this is a fun tool and you find yourself using it more right. and then when you repurpose it they're like okay so I have a reason to take this picture of my cat <laughs> I have a reason to do this because now I'll use this later on Instagram yeah. and that's another thing that's kind of important is make sure you're paying attention to screen size a lot of times like if I'm just going to put it on Instagram it's fine if it's a little four by three but we go widescreen for Facebook but yeah so I think that like I said repurposing it really makes a huge difference for me in going Oh wait, I can turn this into X, Y, and Z, and then you have a blog, you have a Tumblr or something. Right. You can take all that information and put it there and then find each other at fault. Right. And it's funny because I've had a lot of conversations where not necessarily if I'm not on a social certain social media platform, it doesn't mean my audience isn't. Right. Like I might see actually no value in something personally, and then they're like, What's your customers with? So then you have to learn it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a conversation a lot about QR codes. Like, do we use QR codes? Yeah. Is your audience using QR codes? And it's, it's are they? Ours is not so much. We've okay. tried. They just <laughs> not as much as we thought yeah. we, because we did a campaign before, and it's just not as. Um, it seems kind of cool when they first came out and were easily available, but now it's a little, I think a little bit of work yeah, on the customer's part to get the content. So. Like if it was built into my my iPhone camera, yeah. and I didn't have to have a separate app, and I was like, right. oh, done, go. That'd be great, but yeah. if there's still that step of finding the app. Right, and more of a scan than a picture. Yeah, because I, I don't have to, I don't get them because my hand jiggles. It just, yeah, as you're trying to, trying to do it. Uh -huh. No, I totally want to scan it. Yeah, like I said, we've tried it before and it just it wasn't, our audience wasn't yeah. interested in it. But there, there are other places, it's huge. It's funny because I um, had a meeting with Z-Trip, but they're the ones that took over for Yellow Cab. And they, they had a conversation in their office about whether or not to get rid of the phone number. But then they realized a lot of their clientele doesn't use social media. Because they had switched over to an app very similar to Uber and um, Lyft to reach this demographic. But they still had this demographic over here who doesn't have a smartphone, doesn't have a computer, who uses a phone call. 
So it's just interesting how you kind of have to keep in mind of all these target audiences. Right. Who, um, like, for example, with Scare House, our demographic is different than a lot of other haunted houses because it's like 24 to 34 year old female. Um, women looking at Google Analytics on the website or Facebook or even Instagram, it skews female and older. Yeah. It's, and it's not the 18 year old kid looking for a slasher. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fun, it's, it's, it's a little bit different because then you can kind of do things differently, be a little more. We like to put a lot more into our videos and the content and, and kind of do a higher quality video and have a story as opposed to just the stab and go. Right, right. <laughs> it's such an interesting environment when you work for a haunted yeah. house. It's, it's such a unique, unique niche. Yeah. <laughs> I think so it's, it's always like trying to find your audience and paying attention to them and getting them what they need versus right. what you think they need. Right. Yeah, reason I have a job. <laughs> Did I have any, any questions I can ask? Yeah, I'll definitely give you your email address, okay. and then we'll mail this out there and email this to you. For sure. Huh? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. I have a multitude of things in my bag. <laughs> Good. And we didn't have sword paying attention to you because oh, he just texted um, best gift or best question slide yes. ever. <laughs> this is a, from our appointment video for Scare House a few years ago, and I was doing my best selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I had let me see, this is this is the one I had earlier. And I was like, this yeah, is what yeah, my best friend excited you. <laughs> Thanks 
later on, I will be talking about virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 